bowling ball just invalidates any attempts he can have at recovery. And then again, Snake does not have to recover low. He is one of those characters, one of the few characters Oof. who can just go high and not care about it. So uh, I don't know how much experience Bobo necessarily has in this matchup. I don't think you know we have that many relevant villagers here in Westchester. So this might actually be a bit... He might get caught off he guard. He sat on top of his C4, and you can see a little bit of like, oh, we got to get the hands here. He's got to get used to villager. The biggest thing, like the little things about villager is how these pellets are buffer input to monsters. You can just feel it. Ooh, see, there's the bowling ball attempt, but not close enough. Oh, pockets on grenades. See, that's not C4 as good. C4 is on the top left platform, Ooh. by the way. Yeah. Detonates on its own. No, um, he did it. He pulled it there. Um, there we go. Oh, see, uh, pocketing grenade isn't as good as it sounds because the timer doesn't go back to normal. That, ooh, ooh. is on the ledge for too long, and I believe Lloyd no, exploded. He, no, no, he re-grabbed and C4 detonated. I see. I thought he ran out of time, but yeah, it was C4 and the Lloyd explosion. Does a lot, and triple turnips going to kill the RNG factor on Villager. Yeah, one of the few characters in this game who does have RNG as a component. At the very least, all three of his down airs now spike. Yeah. As opposed to back in the day when it was only three turnips that would actually spike and you would wow. just get hit by it. And you're like, I understand I got hit by the down air, but also psh, RNG. I love this crouching neutral to keep Villager from just having free projectile options. Because the last thing you want to do against this character is jump at them wildly. And I guess the best way to handle that is having a low hurt box. Now, can Snake crouch underneath Lloyd Rock? Yes, on startup. And a little bit till it gets to the midway, and then it'll start to drift downwards. But initial Lloyd, and they don't even need to do that, because their dash attack is intangible wrists, and they could go through it. And they could punch villagers for trying. We saw it earlier. Oh, I thought the up air. Grenade up air. We've seen it happen for less. And not stopping the volleyball rain. Oh, jab blocks. You never see villagers really make this work. Oh, now we have the problem. This tree is not the problem. That frame seven kill option, and then he set it off. We'll take the stock trade, yeah. and let's see what we get from here. So far, both kills actually have been sneaky C4 placements. Really worth noting, because that means that, you know, Snake is a character with kill options, you know, Ooh. things like that, up, uh, the up tilt that everyone knows and loves to hate. But the amount of C4s that are landing are actually quite surprising. I mean, with the way he's playing, and he's making Villager really approach, which is surprising to say out loud, aggressive Villager, you can appreciate the C4s. The C4s are also a lot more ledge-based in a platform, so he can have that half of the stage as his, and that's important. What a... And he caught him DIing that way. That could have been it, and he's using good stall, and a lot... Of, what a catch on uh, the Nikita. Yeah. That doesn't... Just keeps going. And there's a shield... Yeah, you gotta watch yeah. out. They made that do half shield damage, so if you have anything stuck, you will do. Forgot where the C4 was. Yeah, again, and that C4 now on the top left platform. I'm sure Pokelam is aware of it. Nice job baiting oh. him out with the careful Lloyd placement. C4 on the top platform now. Ooh, and yeah, you can see that the way that uh, he's so aware of the fact that C4 has been working out for him decently, to the point where Bobo will often retreat to where that C4 is and threaten the guy to be like, yeah, come and get me. Yeah, we can see it's great on platforms. <laughs> and I forget, grab catches items. All right, as long as he can keep this. Now see, that C4 on the platform is making it so Pogey Lamp can't just go over there and play his turn. Or let's see what happens next, their turn. Oh, what? Where are they going? Other side, really smart. Knowing that the C4 is over there, that he cannot just like... Ooh, catching the roll. Yeah. Do it at 170. Yeah, you know, you see, these two Zoner characters really came in. They were swinging most of that time. I think if Bobo needs to make an adaptment, Bobo ate a lot of his own damage. Bobo was just blowing himself up. Not intentionally, mind you. Just at one point, he literally took his own C4. Your grenades are working against him. He got shield poke because of it. He's getting well, grabbed. He was, but at the same time, one of the things about his his grenade, the snake's grenade, is that uh, he's able to you know hold shield with it, and then and it'll it, drop. Yeah, it'll trigger if the opponent hits the shield, which we saw definitely a few times. Uh, so it, it, it's hard to say exactly what Bobo needs to be doing different. Uh, for one, and this is hard to just you know say, but he wasn't getting that much off of singular hits. 
he wasn't converting it into that much damage. Instead, we had a lot of going back and forth, but Villager had so many projectiles, so many different ways of like getting hits in that the damage output was just kind of in Pokolam's favor until he was able to get a stock just a little bit sooner. All right, let's see where they took it. Back to Battlefield. Let's see if there's anything they learned here. I do kind of agree. All right. That was an interesting setup. And there it is. The dash attack ignoring the Lloyd. Intangible wrists will make projectiles a lot less hard to deal with. Ooh. Nope. Just sitting there. Up tilt. Fantastic. Yeah, these single nickel and dime strategies. Did he stick him? No. It's on that top right oh, platform. Look at it. Again, he doesn't have to respect him. And this is what I was talking about before, where he wasn't getting big conversions last game. This time, 106% with barely any percent on his own body to show for it. Uh, Bobo, like, doing the Pokalam. If you are Pokalam, you have to be so much more scared about getting hit Oops. even once. Ooh, Battlefield saving him there. Kind of wishing that stock was over. This bag here, very slept on move by Snake. All right, let's see. You're dead here. F-Tilt will confirm at 130 up. And he got you right on the corner. Oh, Nair's. Oh, no! <laughs> That Are you was kidding? disgusting. <laughs> After everything Bobo had done, his hard work undone in just a moment. Pokalam with that beautiful edge guard taking it in such a decisive way means that he, he would have been fighting back by so much. But now all of a sudden we have an even game. And if anything, like, that's just great situational awareness to realize that you can just nair continuously. And at worst, Cypher comes out and then you have the opportunity opportunity to ruin Cypher. So that was just a lose-lose situation from start to finish. Let's see if Bobo can hold this ledge. This is where villagers think they want to be, but... Oh, why are you going? And triple turnip. Ooh. That C4 is on the right side of the stage right now. Here's your regular update, PSA. Oh, oh, oh and that wow. confirmed against him. I thought Alper was going to come out. That triple turnip might have been it. Let's okay, see. Nice snake back there. That move is the late hit of it. It's just it stays out for so long. And <laughs> oh. what a pocket hitbox! I didn't think that grabbed it. And he has the Nikita. It's something that definitely he has to be scared of. It's not that strong, unfortunately. So it doesn't amplify. It amplifies by I believe 1.5 or 1.3 jumps right into the C4. You don't want to see that. But maybe he thought he'd have more time because he was jumping at ledge. Let's see. Good single hit conversions here. And let's see if we can have a repeat from Bobo for earlier on. He still has Pokalam trapped in the corner. Oh, but the, the range that Bobo, uh, that Pokalam has with his aerials can sort of prevent Bobo from putting too much pressure on too confidently. Let's see what we can get out of this. This is a great spot to be in. You can crouch through things. Pokalam's got to start making low, low shots. But if you're doing that, you're not playing at your most optimal. And now it's just like, it may be at ledge, but Snake doesn't care. C4 is going to go off, and he set it off on his own. I was about to say, he got 30 seconds, he'll set off on its own. It's been there for quite a while. And let's see. He doesn't need to take the approach, but he is trying to force a bad option. If spot dodge or anything. Ooh, not dying, Snake, a thick boy. Not dying anytime soon. Oh, odd up smash, down tilt, finally taking it, 190. 89% deficit. Let's see what we can make a do with here. Oh, already Bobo looking to get big stuff done with that C4, but like, the man, Pokalem being much more aggressive, closing the gap, and we already saw in that stock one what he's capable of if he gets in at the right time. Bobo forced to go to the platforms here, and but finding his hits where he can. Ooh, there's a nice adjustment in Bobo where he's realizing when he needs to hold forward and when he needs to hold back, and that is done. He didn't even get hit. What? You can't come back from that. So I, I blinked. Hmm? I blinked. You blinked.